Welcome to the Rock Management Insights, the video cast interview series of the profile unit Responsible Corporate Competitiveness of the University of St. Gallen. I am Katrina Klöckner and I'm here today with Heike Bruch. And um, Heike Bruch is full professor of leadership at the University of St. Gallen and she is director of the Institute of Leadership and Human Resource Management of the University of St. Gallen. And her field of research is um, topics concerning leadership and organizational energy. Mm -hmm. Heike, welcome. I'm happy you're here today with me. Um, just to start the first question about the managerial challenge you observe in companies. Um, you or your, your question or your interest is uh, lies in the question that some companies are very successful, very um, um, innovative, have innovative approaches and um, can handle fundamental changes, whereas other companies are inert um, and have problems with uh, changes or change processes. In your research, you focus on the role of managers, how they can uh, activate the potential of companies. So which or what would you say is exactly the managerial um, challenge in companies you observe at the moment? The greatest leadership challenge that we observe is to uh, mobilize the full potential of people and organizations and focus it uh, on the right things. Mm -hmm the most important things, which mm -hmm. should be the shared goals of an organization. Mm -hmm. Often we find uh, either that uh, energy is not fully mobilized, mm -hmm. which means that companies are complacent or inert or mm -hmm. suffer from resignation, or they have mobilized their full potential, which means that people are emotionally involved, mm -hmm. they are mentally active and they make a uh, strong effort, mm -hmm. but they use this potential for the wrong things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is the central or the, the key, the aha of your research? Hmm. Um, when we uh, looked at this challenge in organizations, we found that often it is difficult for managers to, um, to assess mm -hmm. um, the, the potential of their people to understand mm -hmm. what their current state is mm -hmm. and uh, what we call uh, what the current state of the energy in the organization right. is. So um, we tried in our research to make this what everybody can, can, can um, uh, relate to in the gut feeling, um, to assess it. Uh, to measure it. And that is one of the uh, insights of our research that we say uh, a starting point for every leader must be to understand well uh, what the current situation of the energy is. Mm -hmm. And um, when working with organizations for several years, we, we worked uh, intensively uh, with six large in, uh, organizations that uh, we developed an, uh, a tool, um, a measurement tool to assess the energy in organizations. Okay. And uh, when you look at this um, mm -hmm. uh, framework that we developed, you can see that we can distinguish uh, the energy first here on the basis of the intensity. We mm -hmm. find uh, either high energy, which means that people are fully emotionally involved, that they are mentally alert, that they are fully active, or we find low mm -hmm. energy, mm -hmm. which means that people are not fully mobilized, not fully engaged, huh? you, uh, there's a lack of energy. Okay. And the second question is um, the quality. And here we distinguish between positive and negative energy. Mm -hmm. Positive means that people use this energy in a constructive form mm -hmm. pursue, to pursue the shared goals mm -hmm. in the organization, um, as opposed to negative energy, which means they use it for the wrong things. Um, they use it against the, uh, the company. And when you combine those two uh, dimensions, you get four ideal type energy states. Um, what you would like to have is high positive energy, uh, the, the top right quadrant. The we call it energy. Yeah, field. we call it productive oh, yeah. energy, mm -hmm. which means that uh, people are fully engaged and they use it um, for the right things. This potential is focused. Huh? Uh, right. It's on mm -hmm. the right uh, challenges. And that kind of energy 
um, is closely related to performance in organizations. And you, we, we checked it for um, and tested it in, in uh, empirical studies for different performance indicators, mm -hmm. for pi financial performance. You could see that companies that the, uh, have more of this productive energy are significantly more successful in financial terms. They grow. Um, more quickly than others, uh, their, their innovation rates are higher, their customer passion mm -hmm. is higher, mm -hmm. and the loyalty of people. So okay. um, those factors, high positive energy, that we captured here um, in this productive energy are performance relevant, are highly important or, uh, for, for the um, success of an organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You would find um, low positive energy, we call it comfortable energy, which captures the satisfaction, identification, this... Everything is cozy. Yeah, cozy, mm -hmm. feeling at ease. Um, and first, when we started this research, we, uh, we um, suggest or we were expecting that this is negative for performance because we mm -hmm. thought company are, companies are lazy, they, they lose their ability mm -hmm. to change. Mm -hmm. But we were wrong. We were wrong. People, uh, uh, people want to identify and companies need that kind of uh, energy, which gives a kind of stability, continuity, but it must not be dominant. Mm -hmm. So a healthy organization would always have high productive energy, people are fully engaged, but also high comfortable energy in the sense that people like it. Mm -hmm. They identify, huh? So that is a, a very healthy situation. You wouldn't want a company that has high productive energy and is very low and comfortable energy. That means it goes beyond the limits, so people are tense and uh, it's not, not, not a healthy state. But you would also not want the opposite, which means high comfortable energy um, uh, in, the, in the lazy form, huh? so, which means that people identify and like it because they uh, have a lousy job or they uh, don't um, fully engage. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Then we have two, neg uh, two negative energy states. We have uh, resigned uh, inertia, low negative energy, which means frustration, inner withdrawal, lack of engagement. And that is often an energy state which is, uh, which is um, dominant in companies that go through change processes, that have uncertain perspectives, unclear strategies. Um, and priorities in the company. And the worst case is corrosive energy. Um, here you would um, have a full activation. People are fully emotionally uh, involved and mentally um, alert and, and active, but they use it yeah, in, a, in a destructive form mm -hmm. to work against the company goals, resistance, micropolitics, mm -hmm. uh, also maximizing their per mm -hmm. personal benefits at the uh, cost of the company, and that is corrosive mm -hmm. energy. So uh, one of the key insights is that we help companies to assess their energy um, which gives leaders a good picture uh, where to focus, what to do. Um, on top of that, we develop leadership strategies that allow uh, mm -hmm. four ideal type leadership strategies. So two that help you mobilize energy, mm -hmm. one strategy that uh, shows you how to overcome negative energy, mm -hmm. and the most challenging one is to keep productive energy high. Mm -hmm. This is the winning the princess? No, 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 no. <laughs> well, uh, let us look at two mobilizing strategies. Okay. They are the, the, the standards. Uh, mm -hmm. When uh, working with companies, we, we, we try to identify uh, situations where productive energy was particularly high. Mm -hmm. And we found this was the case in two very, very different kind of situations. Mm -hmm. That was, on the one hand, uh, what you mentioned, the winning the princess, what we call the winning the princess strategies in certain situations when companies were confronted with a particular opportunity. Mm -hmm. Some fascinating, unique opportunity, something that you could win, huh? a, cha uh, mm -hmm. a chance. Mm -hmm. Can be a vision, can be something where you say, this is great, innovation, new markets, uh, introducing new products, changing the company in a positive form. That was one situation when they were pursuing a, a vision, a special opportunity. And the other situation was completely different. And that is what we call uh, slaying the dragon. Mm -hmm. That are situations when companies are fighting um, a threat or a 
dealing with a negative challenge that can be a crisis, that can also be a strong competitor, mm -hmm. or it can be a loss of key customers, some uh, innovation that substitutes your products, okay. so some, some really tangible uh, threat. Mm -hmm. and, um, in most cases, you, you would find that those situations do not automatically lead to productive energy, but leaders have to um, define uh, the challenge and have to, or have to define this vision, have to communicate it in a way that people um, feel um, affected, that they realize it's relevant mm -hmm. for me, uh, it, it, it matters, mm -hmm. uh, and they need to strengthen the confidence we can achieve it, we can achieve the vision, or yes, we can conquer the, the dragon or the, okay. uh, this crisis. It's a very active uh, leadership task, um, and both strategies uh, help, you see it with, with these arrows there, mm -hmm. help organizations to, to mobilize the energy.